This show is brought to you by Safety FM. The following program is rated MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Finally, show with the balls and call it like it is. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Countdown to audio torture. The Rated R Safety Show starts in three, two, one. Ah, let the eardrum pain begin. Forget the corporate bullshit. This is the Rated R Safety Show with your host, Dr. Uh, it doesn't matter who the host is. Well, 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 it surely does not matter. Anyways, how are you? Hopefully everything is good and grand inside of your neck of the woods. Um, and hopefully you had a excellent Independence Day in tea, if you're into that kind of thing to celebrate. Uh, anyways, we're broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida, and coming across the multiverse of Safety FM. Yes, that is true. That is what we're doing, hanging out, doing that thing. And then, of course, we're hanging out with our friends, our colleagues, our amigos, los amigos de amigos, los amigos de todos, you know, the, the people from uh over there, over there, you know, over there. With streams so crisp that you can feel the sarcasm in your ear holes. Radio Big. So we are hanging out with our pals from Radio Big. So what did you do? Did you do anything exciting, anything fun? Did you go out and about? Did you celebrate the Independence Day? Did you watch Independence Day would be the other thing. Um, I'll tell you, I landed in that second category of the of the watching of the Independence Day, meaning the movie, because that's definitely what I ended up doing. Uh, so did you do anything fun, anything exciting? Was there a lot of kind of weird fireworks going on in wherever the hell you're at? I'm blessed enough that I actually live in an area that I could look from outside of my patio area and i can see all the fireworks that go on in the little downtown section so it's kind of cool on how that actually ends up happening so hopefully you were blessed enough to do so um and then i guess if you kind of are in the florida area and you live next to that magical world thing uh you probably don't even care if fireworks ends up coming about and so on so good morning mr Pozo. hopefully everything's good and grand with you uh so we are back of course this is tuesday july the 6th of 2021 day 187th of the year don't take that in the cop form on what that means and only 178 days left to go so with that being said a lot of stuff to talk about a little bit of time to to hang out and do so so let's get it rolling and bowling and start talking about the trends we won't t- i mean i kind of feel kind of weird i have to tell you uh yesterday it seemed like a lot of people did show back up to work um because they didn't celebrate or have the observation or whatever observance day or whatever the hell you want to call it um i definitely did not partake of that i mean meaning uh, returning to work early i could have done it um i guess uh not that i had like much of anything going on yesterday that's for sure uh so let's talk about the things that have happened over the last little bit so let's start talking about the trends right away and we'll start talking about what is trending inside of the of the world of music because some people are going to find that stuff important some people are going to like it some people are not going to care about it those are the things that happen and that's perfectly okay so according to itunes uh the top five songs are these here we go bts butter drake featuring little baby Want and needs. Uh, number three, does a cat kiss me more? At number two, Ed Sheeran, bad habits. And at number one, according to iTunes, is Olivia Rodrigo with Good for You. Now, I have to tell you this because I did, not that I discovered it over the weekend, but I was taking a listen to some stuff over the weekend. Spatial audio. And if you have not taken a advantage or taken a listen to some of the stuff related to spatial audio, you really have to, um, you have to do so. Spatial audio is where it's at. It's kind of listening to things around the sequence. I've been listening to music in that, but uh, now at this particular point, uh, good old iTunes have released a list of songs in spatial audio. 
Have to listen to it with headphones for it to make sense or a really good surround sound system inside of your home. Anyways, let's give you the top five according to Spotify. At number five, Deja Vu, Olivia Rodrigo. Number four, Little Nas X with Montero. Uh, number three, oh, Dua Lipa featuring the baby with Levitating. At number two, Daja Cat with Kiss Me More. And at the number one spot on the other side here, it's good for you. So at least they have settled on um, that they do agree with uh, good for you being the top of what they're saying song-wise of what's going on. So that's a cool thing in and around and about. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Coming in from inside of the box. Uh, So let's get it moving and grooving. By the way, by the way, before I forget, uh, as you do know, we do broadcast from Florida. There is a storm that's kind of hitting the outer band, kind of coming up the state and all that kind of fun stuff. Worst comes to worst, we'll do a pre-record for tomorrow. Just saying. Um, if that, if that's the case, if the things look like they're going to end up going into, uh, the crapper, uh, so don't worry about that. So we'll be here one way, shape or form, even if it's audio format, I'll get something out there for you. Anyways, before I get too far into this other side of the world, let's do this. Let's get you into feature story news. Here is the news on the Rated R Safety Show. From Future Story News in London, I'm Chris Jones. A passenger plane with 28 people on board has lost contact with air traffic controllers on the Russian peninsula of Kamchatka. A ground, sea and air search is ongoing, but no sign of a crash has yet been discovered. Julia Chapman has more. Russia's emergency ministry says six crew members and 22 passengers, including one child, were on board the AN-26 plane. The Soviet-era aircraft was travelling from Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky, the capital of the region, to a small northern village of Polana. It failed to make a scheduled communication before its planned landing in the remote region. Helicopters and ground crews are involved in the search operation with a suspicion that the plane may have crashed into the sea. In 2012, a plane crashed on its way into Palana, colliding with a mountain and killing 10 people. The UK government says COVID-19 cases could hit 100,000 a day after England's lockdown restrictions end later this month. Boris Johnson's confirmed he plans to fully reopen England's economy on July 19th. 64% of Britons have received both vaccine doses, but the opposition Labour Party says the government is being reckless. Health Secretary Sajid Javid says easing restrictions will inevitably lead to more infections. By July the 19th we could expect to see cases at around 50,000 a day from the current 25,000 and in fact and I have to level with you I think that beyond July the 19th as these easings coming we should expect to see case numbers even far higher than 50,000 and uh, we're being very straight about this the pandemic is not over but the last time we had case numbers that were around 25,000 a day we were very sadly seeing around 500 deaths a day. The number of deaths now is around one thirtieth of that. Germany has said it's ready to welcome more international tourists with the country's main public health agency removing the UK and several other countries from its travel ban list. Here's our Berlin correspondent Trent Murray. Germany had originally placed the UK on its travel ban list following the rise of the Delta variant but with a new strain now circulating widely in Germany as well the public health agency has declared that the UK could be removed from a list of countries flagged as having variant concerns. Russia, Portugal, Nepal and India were also removed from that list at the same time. It means that travellers from all five of the countries can once again fly to Germany, but they will need to quarantine on arrival for 10 days, though that time can be shortened to five days with a negative COVID-19 test. People who have been fully vaccinated, however, can avoid quarantine altogether. And India has reported one of its lowest daily tallies of COVID-19 cases in almost four months. More than 34,000 cases were recorded on Tuesday. It is now hoped that authorities will relax lockdown restrictions even further. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks, continuing our look at the situation in Afghanistan as the day approaches when all US and NATO troops will have left the country. We've heard a lot over the last few days about the Taliban retaking territory, especially in the north of the country, and the fears of many Afghans, especially women, about what will be entailed if the Taliban retake control of the entire country. But have they changed over the last 20 years? Frank Ledwidge is a 
a former British military intelligence officer who served in both Afghanistan and Iraq. I think part of them have changed. They realise that the political attraction of not allowing kites and music uh, is limited. They still cleave apparently to their strict interpretations of the Sharia, which is bad news obviously for women and indeed everybody else. Let's remember the Taliban isn't necessarily one big amorphous or rather even directed unit. There's been a civil war in Afghanistan almost without stop for 42 years. The only time there wasn't was in the late 90s, actually, when the Taliban was in charge. And even then in the north, there was still fight. I think what will happen is, most likely, is there'll be some kind of cobbled together arrangement. There'll still be fighting. You know, well into the future. It is unclear whether post-withdrawal the US military will retain the authority to target the Taliban for airstrikes if the Pentagon deems they pose a threat to Afghan forces. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. To recap our top stories, a passenger plane with 28 people on board has lost contact with air traffic controllers on the Russian peninsula of Kamchatka. The UK government says COVID-19 cases could hit 100,000 a day after England's lockdown restrictions end later this month. Germany has said it's ready to welcome more international tourists, including those from the UK, and India has reported one of its lowest daily tallies of COVID-19 cases in almost four months. That's the latest feature story news chris jones reporting you know how sometimes you're out and about and sometimes you have to access a report maybe your bank account maybe something that's important to you but you don't want other people to be able to access it i know you're probably sitting there for a moment going well why don't you just go into incognito mode and use that instead well let me tell you something real quick incognito mode does not hide your activity it doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser's history your internet service provider can still see every single website Website you visited and that's why even when i'm at home i never go online without using express vpn it doesn't matter who your internet provider is it can be verizon comcast or even at&t the isp in the u.s can legally sell your information to ad companies express vpn is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your isp can't see the sites that you visit express vpn also keeps Keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the times, I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET CNET. and Wired. Wired. Visit my exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash safety and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash safety. ExpressVPN.com slash safety to learn more. I spend a lot of time in the backyard, and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And in 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky. Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me. But I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. What if I told you that a tornado was going to happen tomorrow right where you live? that it would touch down at exactly 3.17 p.m. and I told you the exact path it would take. You would, of course, prepare. You would talk with your loved ones and you'd make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a tornado will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you have a plan anyway? 
Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. This is Mario Andretti. You know me as a race car driver, but I'm also a Meals on Wheels volunteer. I've raced against the sport's biggest personalities, but I've never met more vibrant, amazing people than the seniors served by Meals on Wheels. You can make a difference by dropping off a hot meal and saying a quick hello. So, America, let's do lunch. Volunteer your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. This show is almost as enjoyable as hearing the sound of the toilet flush. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. So it sounds like for sure a lot of stuff going on inside of the world of the news, as we already know, and all that kind of fun stuff. So as you are aware, the market was not open yesterday. So let's get Johnny Smalls in here, and he can tell us roughly what happened on, you know, at Viernes real quick. So let's take a listen to this. It is 16 minutes past the top of the hour. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Tuesday, July 6th, 2021. The global equity rally gained momentum last week on the combination of reduced inflation fears and robust labor data. Friday's non-farm payroll report came in at 850,000, or 100,000 better than expected to post solid job gains for the month. With that, unemployment ticked higher, but for a good reason. Previously discouraged workers are returning to the labor force. What this means for the market is a clearer path for the FOMC. With inflationary pressures apparently subsiding and the labor market still strong, the Fed has little reason to act. This week, the biggest hurdle for the market will be the FOMC minutes. The minutes from the last meeting will be closely watched for any signs of Fed thinks inflation is getting out of control. The wrong wording within the statement could spook the market and send it into another tailspin. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at MarketBeatMinute.com. Okay, thank you, Johnny Smalls, for that one. So there you go. We got a lot of stuff, of course. So are you, what do you think? I shouldn't say, are you playing the the stocks? Because we talk about it quite enough that you're probably going, can you stop asking the same dumbass question? If you're playing, cool. If you're not playing, that's cool, too. Uh, so there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. So I don't know. It's interesting to see the stuff that is going on. But anyways, let's get you inside of the shit list and let's start talking about the things that are going on inside of the world here. So 11 men have been charged in the Massachusetts in, in charge in Massachusetts after their suspicious activity forced the closure of a stretch of interstate over the weekend. The ordeal began when police investigated a pair of cars in the early hours Saturday morning that stalled on the side of the road with their blinkers on. When approached, the men said that they uh, ran out of gas, but police also noted they were carrying weapons and wearing tactical gear. When asked uh, to drop their weapons, they fled into the woods out of uh, out of the abundance of caution. Law enforcement ordered a shelter in place. Order um, in place ordered the nearby community. After nine hours, the men were arrested. They were charged with eight counts of unlawful possession of firearms, ammunition and use of body armor in uh, in a commission of crimes. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, they said that they were traveling to Rhode Island to Maine to attend an unspecified training and are believed to be members of the Morris Simon Archaeology. A court hearing is scheduled to occur early this morning. Hold on. So you're going to have two cars that are going to drop off to the side of the road and say the exact same thing. Hey, we're, we're out here because uh, we think that uh, we ran out of gas. Uh, so that's going to be the interesting part. So, okay. So you ran out of gas, but that you're going to be in tactical gear, all kinds of weapons and all kinds of ammunition. And then the moment they tell you to drop your weapons, you're going to run off to the, to the weeds. Uh, and I know it said woods, but I'm going to say the weeds here. Uh, yeah, some interesting stuff for sure. Uh, so anyways, let's continue talking of wildfire dubbed Arizona's Tiger Fire has now scorched 9,800 acres across the state, including much of the Prescott National Forest. A bit of rainfall has has um, aided efforts to um, douse, you know, douse, douse. El Inferno, um, which is believed to have started in June the 30th. So think about this. Today's July the 6th. So June the 30th, experts say that much of the much more rain would be needed to have substantially had an impact. Okay, we are talking about the desert here, okay? So not a lot of rain that we normally talk about here in the desert. I mean, just something to think about for sure as we are going about this. Uh, let's continue talking. Matter of fact, before we continue talking, before we continue talking here, 
You know, we could go hazard matrix again because that's what I love to talk about. How do you plan for it? How do you plan for 9,800 acres to start burning up? You kind of don't, but you start talking about these things. You start going in and out and going, okay, we can plan for this. It's probably the likelihood of it happening. You're probably not going to be very high, but let's talk about it anyways and then go from there. I don't know. I mean, it kind of becomes one of those weird things that it can happen, but do you always expect things to happen? Absolutely not. But this is kind of the world that we live in. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're not. listening to the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so it sounds like he is going to pull it off. Take a listen here. Virgin Galactic will launch a crew of six into space on July the 11th, nine days before um, Amazon does. And if successful, it would be a landmark, be a landmark for space tourism. Uh, Virgin has been developing a space tourism <laughs> model for a uh, business model and the technology to pull it off for the last. You ready for this? 17 years 17 years there are about 600 potential space tourists on official wait list estimates suggest the tickets cost are you ready uh, uh, um let's get this ready Two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. okay so hold on you have to tell me what's so special about this trip opposed to me flying to arizona i mean come on Two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand dollars. Is it the price of fuel? Because I'm sure as shit, not sure what the hell else I'll be paying for. Somebody needs to explain that one to me. Listen at your own risk. Rated R safety show. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't get it. Anyways, Chinese astronauts completed the first spacewalk outside of the country's new space station on sunday the pair of seven uh, the, these pair spent seven hours outside of the station setting up cameras and other equipment the feat comes a day after the chinese government announced plans to put humans on mars by 2032 hold on 2032 okay kicking off the program of routine flights to the red planet in support of establishing permanent human facility okay so is musk gonna get there before everybody else because that's what i'm trying to find out now that's going to be the the next uh, the next thing to to figure out. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is a little bit of a sad story, as we've been talking about over the last little bit, and this is dealing with Surfside here in Florida. A Florida judge rejected on Sunday a request for owners of pets missing in the Surfside condo collapse to continue searching for them, even if they waived any liability. The demolition happened anyways on Sunday. So... I don't know if you heard about this, I mean, in regards to the demolition side, but the building that did partially collapse about a week ago, uh, they did go ahead and pull the rest of it. And yes, that is a demolition term of where they pulled the rest of the building because they said that it was unsafe to continue to search in some of the areas they were because they were not sure if the rest of the building was going to collapse or not. So, yes, it is a struggle to listen to people who have their pets. Of course, there's still over 100 people still missing. And unaccounted for. But it is one of those things that we are talking about. And there are saying that the part of the building they ended up pulling on Independence Day is a part of the building where most of the master bedrooms or owner bedrooms would be located inside of the condos. So a lot of stuff to think about there for sure. Three men were found dead on an Atlanta area golf course on Saturday, including the course director of golf the suspects allegedly drove onto the green to pick up a truck or in a pickup truck not to pick up a truck and when a golf director arrived to investigate was shot in the head the shooters ran off leaving his vehicle uh where authorities found two other bodies one of the one of those dead was a registered owner of the pickup truck no suspects have been identified in this why is it that we come back from the weekend and we go into these weird combos and start talking about all kinds of fun stuff that's that's for sure. And I don't mean fun, like real fun. I'm being smart ass when I say fun there. Anyway, let's continue talking. The National Transportation Safety Board says that it is using sonar to locate the cargo plane that was ditched at the coast of Hawaii last week. Uh, miraculously, both pilots survived a late night water landing where they were found clutching to the tail of the plane, stay, uh, staying afloat on packages in the water. They were bad. They were both badly injured, though details are slim. Yeah, I, I would imagine water landing in Hawaii. I mean, think about worst nightmare scenarios, not the Hawaii part, but talking about crash landing into the water close to Hawaii. And you see, it's kind of one of these things that we talk about all the time. You can have all, all, all of the things planned out that you want, but you never know what might happen. 
And, you know, some people go, well, Jay, you talk a lot about the news. You talk a lot about the news and not a lot about safety. How the hell? How the hell are we not talking about it? We're talking about a combination of both. What happens is when we use real form application, some people don't like talking about that. When we use real form application, people are like, well, that's that's not a workplace injury. Hold on. That's not a workplace injury, Jay. That's not a workplace injury. I know it's not a workplace injury. But hold on. If you're the pilots, it is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Let's think about that for a hot second. Duh. So that's the thing. What policy, what procedure could have been written that was like, oh, you will avoid this accident. Oh, yes, we will do so. You will avoid this. Injury. You can't. So now I'm wondering the question of, well, now that we're talking about this, because they had a crash landing in the water, does this make them shitty pilots? Yeah, I said that. Well, here's the fun part. There are some people that are out there that will practice and say, well, if we had better form of pilots or better employees, we wouldn't have the issue. But is that the case? How do you know they didn't do everything within policy, procedure, and standards to make sure that everything was done properly? So, because here's the thing. If you start taking a nosedive towards the water, um, what does the policy and the process and the procedure say about it? Hmm, that's an interesting one, right? A lot of people don't talk about that. It might probably say, if you were to, if you were to, and not exactly what to do next. That's a lot of stuff to think about. But some people are not going to like this conversation because that's what happens. It's okay. I understand. Oops. What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. So did you hear about this? The Russian group of hackers called Reville has (laughs) has taken credit for the ransomware attack that has affected the IT management software uh, management software across the globe. News of the attack first spread over the weekend after 200 companies lost access to their networks. In a total, the group demanded $70 million in Bitcoin. The same group hacked JBS Foods last month. Worth remembering during the recent trip to Europe, uh, let's see, Biden said that he had words with Russian President Vladimir Putin about Russian protection of cro- of cyber criminals. So obviously, it seems like that did not go to plan. Um, I mean, I'm just saying, think about it. Uh, don't, don't know what the plan might have been, but it doesn't sound like it went to plan at all. More sarcasm than a Mortal Kombat beatdown. Rated R Safety Show. Okay, government officials in Singapore have announced that the country will stop tallying COVID cases and death. What? What? Tell me about this. The country will also uh, roll, uh, was also rolling out vaccine passport and testing everyone coming into the country, which will stay um, I identified it. Indefinitely. So it's going to say indefinitely. One official says they're that they're treating it like it was a bad flu and, <laughs> and learning to live with it. Uh, I, I don't know. That's kind of an interesting one. We're not going to tally anymore. I just think that we should stop talking about it. I mean, meanwhile, British, British uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson says that mask wearing and social distancing rules will end no later than July the 19th. While case numbers continue to rise in the UK, deaths remains low and flat. What do you think? Here's the thing. I mean, what do you think about the whole thing? Do masks make you safer? Do emergency vaccines make you safer? Not does actually staying quarantined make you safer? I'm just asking. I mean, you're the, you are the pro. I'm just kind of the hanger on her and kind of hangs out with you. And we talk about these things. But what do you think about this? What do you think is the correct aspect of it? Because a lot of people will sit back and give you the court of public opinion. Well, I am not going to wear a mask because my party guidelines say that it's fake. I am going to wear a mask because I believe everything that my party tells me. And I know some people are going to be like, you're talking. Are you talking about, um, let's see, politics on this show? Duh. Duh. Well, I didn't say that exactly, but you might have actually imposed that in some way, shape, or form. But think about this for just a brief moment. Some people are saying that it's all related to the government, on how the government's doing it. What? I mean, I just don't get it. Can we sit around and talk about conspiracy theories, or do we sit around and talk about science? Because there should be a, a healthy combination of both things. Some people are not going to like that, and that's okay. 
And some people go, well, it's pseudoscience. Well, I mean, I can tell you that I can use science and models and all that kind of shit to prove any point that I want to prove. Because here's the thing. It's easy to come across confirmation bias, and we've spoken about this several times on the show, so I don't think I need to go into what the hell that means. But it's easy to do that. Because if you already kind of have a data set or kind of a mindset that says, okay, well, I am going to prove this. Well, guess what you're going to prove? Well, you're probably going to prove that because that's what you said you're going to prove. It's pretty easy. Anyways, let's continue. Two two convicts escaped their satellite prison camp near Three Rivers, Texas, early on Sunday morning. Both were serving time for selling meth. One is 57-year-old and the other is a 27-year-old. Both remain at large. Okay, so they were selling meth. They were in jail. I get it. I get it. I get it. 30 years apart. So how the hell did they actually get out of the area? Did they end up giving meth to the actual uh, prison guards and that's how they got out? We at Safety FM are not responsible for what this idiot behind the microphone is saying. He is trying to be entertaining. Rated R Safety Show. Here is our main story on the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so let's start talking at this 31 minutes past the hour mark on Tuesday. Yes, it is this lovely Tuesday, July the 6th. Oh, July the 6th. What a great day. Uh, So let's start talking about this because I think that sometimes we start going down some of these paths and we start talking about some of these crazy things that we talk about on this show of course um where we start thinking about are you winning or are you losing yes i did say losing are you a loser not like that don't think about it in that particular fashion and why do we always kind of look at things in this fashion i want you to think about a moment if you have a moment to think about this where you were working inside of an organization you had a a plan where you wanted to start developing this new safety protocol, this new safety program, this new approach to safety, and you got the answer, the dreaded no, the dreaded N-O, the dreaded no way. And the organization told you There was just no way that it was going to happen. There was no way you were going to be able to move forward. There was no way that they were going to take that approach. Now, it could have been thousands of different reasons. It could have been operational issues. It could have been a money issue. It could have been they didn't agree with how your approach was in that particular regard. Now, I want you to take that because sometimes we still tie emotions to these things where I can tell you, I can have conversations with people about something that might've happened in their past and they'll get extremely heated about something. It still boils up that thought process of what they were thinking at the time. Now I want you to hold that for just a second. Okay. Do you, you got that one? I, I, I want you to think about that. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Now let's kind of just move that over for just one second. Okay, it's really going to be longer than a second, but that's okay. So let's just move that over. Now, let's talk about this next portion. And I want you to think about a time, any organization that you were at, where you had an approach that you wanted to do something, and you brought it forward, and they accepted it. They said, yes, we will do this. Yes, we agree with what you're saying. Yes, we see value. Yes, what you are bringing to the table is different than what we've done before. Do you got that moment? Do Do you got it? Okay, I want you to think about it. So now you have on the left side, the yes moment. Now, I want you to think about what we were talking about just a moment ago about when they told you no and that built up anger that you had. Okay, think about that one. Now, let's go back to the yes. Now, I want you to think about were you happy when they told you yes? Or were you miserable? Now, here's the thing. Now, let, let's kind of separate both of those. Let's move them back to the left and to the right as we're talking about them again. On which one did you learn? So once they agreed with your concept, you moved forward, you were able to incorporate it. Great. Great. You took some of your learnings and your understandings and you moved forward with it. Now, when they told you no, did you lose? Or did you take a different approach? 
What did you gather from both scenarios? Because here's the thing. I can sit back and win at something because that's the words that we tend to use and implement something that I want to do and it's fantastic and I won and yes, we are the champions, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. But when I lose, am I taking the concepts that I learned from the loss? Think about that for a moment, because here's what I have learned over the last few years. When I take something that I have not been successful at and I apply the learning from that and try to move forward into a winning scenario, there's a lot of things to learn on what did I do wrong? Was it the approach that I took with the organization on how I was trying to actually implement something? Was I trying too hard? Was I going so far and trying to be too extreme when it came to these things? So there's a lot of learning opportunities from what we'll call a loss and then move forward into what we could put into the win column. But that's the problem. We are inside of this weird world where we want the world and we want it now. Some people want a helicopter to the top where everything has to be given to them at that particular moment in time. And good. I'm glad that there's people that are out there that are like that. But here's the thing. You have to admire the failures as well. The losses. You're not a loser. You're not a failure. Not everything is successful if you look at it in that fashion. There might be something to learn there. I will tell you, you know, I've worked at other places where things have not been great, but they have led me down the path to go to other things that have been successful in my career path. And no, I'm not going to see to sit back and go, it was predetermined. It was written in the stars that things were going to happen. No, that's not what I'm going to tell you. But I look back and go based on failures there was a way to actually take those failures and learn from them. And those learnings led to something entirely different down the road. And that's what I always think that's amazing. Either you can learn and improve or you can lose and do nothing. And people have a hard time with that. If it's not my way, I have lost. Say that shit in a marriage and tell me how that works out for you. Listen, we can go with it with the simple thing that people like to say, hey, you know, I didn't get pizza from the place to place that I wanted, but it's still pizza. So it's still good regardless. Take these opportunities of things you've done in the past and see what the learning event is from there. Don't look at it as a win and a loss. Because I will tell you, there's been some things where I have won it, where if you look at it in the long run, it didn't lead me to where I wanted to go. It didn't lead the organization to where it should be. Some stuff to think about. Because now we can tell you're talking about reverse cycles. Huh, that could get scary. But what the hell do I know? Just a guy behind a microphone. Oops, what did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the home of real safety talk. You are listening to Safety FM. We'll be right back. So I interrupt this very important show to discuss this important matter with you. And here's what I want to share. You know that for years I have been telling you on this show that I don't sleep too great. Well, over the last few months, I've actually acquired a Helix Sleep mattress. And it has changed the way that I sleep entirely. Listen, I have to tell you, for years I have struggled day in and day out or night in and night out on how I sleep. But ever since I went to Helix Sleep and took the sleep quiz... It has changed my way of sleeping. All you need to do to be able to encounter this luxury in your home, just go to helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep is offering up to $200 off of all orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash 
safety. That's helixleep.com slash safety for up to $200 off and two free pillows. We all want to make sure that our family is protected in medical emergencies. What many of us don't realize is that health insurance won't always cover the full amount of an emergency medical flight. Even with comprehensive coverage, you could get hit with high deductibles and co-pays. That's why an Air MedCare Network membership is so important. As a member... If an emergency arises, you won't see a bill for air medical transport when flown by an AMCN provider. Best of all, a membership covers your entire household for as little as $85 a year. AMCN providers are called upon to transport nearly 100,000 patients a year. This is coverage no family should go without. Now, as a Jay Allen Show listener, you'll get up to a $50 e-gift card with a new membership. Simply visit airmedcarenetwork.com slash safety and use the offer code safety. And don't forget to tell them that Jay Allen sent you. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. Look at this little face. I do not love him. Hamilton the pug, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. You make sure his toys don't have any sharp edges. You taught her what to do when the smoke alarm goes off. You do so much to keep your child safe. But are you using the right car seat for your child? Car crashes are a leading killer of children ages 1 to 13. Protect your child's future at every stage of life. For information on the right seat for your child, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. A message from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. So you see, son, good manners are important. Should I go through it again? Yes. Yes, please. Yes, please. Exactly. Always say please, thank you, you're welcome, and excuse me. Sit up straight, hold doors open, don't speak with your mouth full, keep your elbows off the table. Share your things, play nice, and generally treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Got it? Got it. And stop picking your nose. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. I'm a retired school psychologist, and helping people was my thing. After my stroke, when Meals on Wheels started, I was on the other end of the stick, so to speak. My name is Julius Gaines, creative writer, poet, photographer. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. When you're away, nights are sleepless. Do we need space? Yeah, maybe a break. Boy, you're my weakness. Give it, we take the love that we make. It's my favorite drug. Too caught up in your love. I've been trying to forget. Okay, that's King Sis. With yeah, you thinking about you. The song's readily available on Spotify and iTunes. Thank you to King Sis for allowing us to play this one on the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, it's 44 minutes past the top of the hour. You are listening to the Rated R Safety Show exclusively on RadioBig.fm and SafetyFM.com. So let's start getting into some more news information okay a long weekend every weekend the largest ever trial <laughs> trial of a four-day work week has been an overwhelming success and should be implemented according to experts the test that took place in iceland involved about one percent of the country's three hundred fifty thousand people it saw working 35 to 36 hours per week uh spread over four to six, four about four days with no reduction in pay the results of the pilot which ran between 2015 and 2019, then analyzed by research team from both Iceland and the UK, they discovered that more than 2,500 people who took part saw 
their productivity and well-being increase. As a result, Icelandic workers' unions have already started to negotiate for fewer working hours. Perfect. So in our morning show uh, going on Monday through Thursday, or is that Tuesday through Friday? Uh, Maybe, I don't know. Maybe this is something to think about here. And also, you know, I talked to Sheldon Primus. He's for all that work, four day work day. He sure doesn't think much about the idea of working 35 hours a week, though. I mean, that's something to think about. And I thought that this was an excellent idea until I thought about this. I thought it was an awesome idea until I realized that teachers are going to want an extra day off as well, which, of course, then makes it a bad idea. Not that the teachers don't deserve it, but then that just means that I actually have to hang out with my kids a little bit longer, which could be a bad thing for for some, I think. Rated R Safety Show. Sarcastic? Never. Okay, let's continue talking old news. While more adults are reaching 100 years of age every decade. Oh, God. Far fewer make it to the milestone of 110. But... A new study says that that soon may change. Researchers from the University of Washington say that their estimates that estimates that human lifespans are about to push into the uncharted territory. They predict that not only will someone break the record of being the oldest living human, but it's almost a certain that super criterions will start living to their 120s. In fact, they are complicated calculations that determine there will be a 99% chance that someone will live to 122 uh, years before the year 2100 and an 89% chance that someone will hit 126. Currently, the record of the oldest human belongs to uh, Jean Calment of France, who died at 122 in 1997. Kane Tanaka of Japan, the oldest living person, currently is 118 years of age. So this kind of really um, reinvigorates my whole retirement plan. That's for sure. But stay tuned for updates on that. Let's take a look at what happens. So please pause. Please pause and consider what kind of world you'll be living in for your grandparents. I mean, think about it. Oh, by the time that you're a grandparent, how that works. You're talking about living 120, and I can honestly say that I barely, barely made it through Monday. I mean, I'll put it to you that way. Yesterday was Monday. I barely made it through because I had a lot of uh, a lot of nada, a lot of nada going on. Uh, let's talk a little bit about TikTok. TikToks are about to get longer. The short form video app announced it last week that is going to triple the time limit for uploads, allowing a person to post over videos for up to three minutes long. TikTok currently has one one minute limit. Uh, product manager Drew Kurtkosh said the decision is enhances users' creative storytelling abilities. Three minute videos have been testing at least um, at least since December with some TikTok creator, particularly in the categories like cooking. The option is expected to be rolled out to users all all over in the coming weeks. Awesome. Now kids can spend three minutes as long on TikTok to get out of bed than what they were formerly in the morning. So that's a good thing. And now I can finally watch the entire length of a Kesha song of TikTok on TikTok. Yeah, think about that one for a hot minute as I do say that out loud. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're listening to the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so let's continue talking about it. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about Did You Know. Let's talk about Did You Know real quick. A priest says that exorcisms are on the rise and demons are now able to haunt their victims via text messages. Uh, Washington, D.C., uh, Modester. Uh, Stephen Rossetti says that he and his team uh, performed up to 20 exorcisms each week. And in one case, a young woman reached out saying that her dad was receiving snarky text messages from demons, which appeared to be coming from her phone number. The texts were typically de- uh, demonic fair, saying that, like, she belongs to us. Uh, Rossetti says that several other exorcisms have been been also dealt with, with from people that were receiving texts from demons, as he points out. Why not? In the past, they messed with electronics, TVs, lights turning off th- themselves. Now they're messing with phones. This is all according to the New York, uh, the New York Post. Safety in a way never heard of before. The Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. 
Oh, let's continue, continue, continue. Uh, do we want to do Swamp today? No, I'm not feeling it. Let's not do the Swamp. Okay, no winner for Mega Million, uh, Million, Million. Tonight's drawing will be for $82 million or a $57.5 million lump sum. No winner for Friday night. Uh, Powerball drawing either. Wednesday's night's drawing will be for $113 million or an $80 million lump sum, just in case you were intrigued by any of that stuff. Just a little FYI action for you in that particular regard. Anyways, let's talk about some things that happened back on this date. Let's take a look back to uh, 1994. Forrest Gump premieres. The award-winning flick was based on the novel experiences of of the author Winston Groom. The movie won six Oscars. Tom Hanks took place best actor in a leading role in, in Robert Zemeckis. <laughs> won for best director. It won the award of cutting edge CGI animation. Yeah, the legs. The legs thing. And there's some other stuff that they actually did in the movie back in the back in the day as well. Uh, back, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's talk about some birthdays for today. Manny Machabo, 29. Uh, Cody Fern, 33. Eva Green, 41. Paul Gossel, 41. Kevin Hart, 42. Tia and Tamara Maori, 43. 50 Cent, 46. Larsa Pippen, 47, Sylvester Stallone, 75, George W. Bush, 75, and the Dalai Lama turns 86 today. Those are all the birthdays that are going on today, in case you wanted to know that stuff. You want to talk about some days of the year that you can celebrate? We can talk about those. National Hand Roll Day, National Fried Chicken Day. Ah, maybe I should try that out. Now, International Kissing Day is another day. So does that mean that you kiss somebody who's from a different country, or you should just go around smooching people? I'm so confused. Uh, but don't get too confused. If you do some wrong things, I got some friends that might be able to help you out. I'm Jeff Fire. Most people don't know that most of the billions of dollars that I've won in the last 42 years since becoming a trial lawyer didn't go to me. It went to the thousands of clients that hired me to be their warrior. That's my passion. That's what drives me. And nobody does it better. Because I was born for this. Okay, that's Jeffrey Figer, 1-800-A-WINNER. That's 1-800-A-WINNER. Or you could actually go to his website at figerlaw.com. So there you go. Some interesting stuff always going on inside of that world. Anyways, let's talk about some whack facts real quick. As we're 52 minutes past the top of the hour. It is estimated that it takes about 2,000 frowns to cause one wrinkle. Don't try that too much. Every odd number that exists has the letter E in it. Think about that for a moment. Approximately 97% of vegetable varieties grown in the 1900s are now extinct. Pigs and dogs can taste, can taste water. Humans can't. Bubble gum was originally called blibber, blu, blibber blubber gum. 19, that was back in 1906. So, some things to think about as we are talking about that inside of the world here, going back and forth and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, let me tell you about the most important thing that I'm going to tell you throughout the whole show, and that's not a lie. Let me tell you about my friends at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Know that you're not alone. Whether you have struggled with suicide yourself or have lost a loved one, know that you're not alone. Hear about personal experiences from people in your local communities who lives have been impacted by suicide and depression. For more information, you can go to AFSP.org. That's AFSP.org. Or you can call 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Or text the word TALK to 741-741. Now, if you go to the website, I'm going to tell you, you can find out real stories directly on there. You can get help. You can join a local chapter. and You can even help make a difference in your local communities. So if you're so inclined to do so, I would recommend strongly going over there, taking a look to what they have to say. All kinds of stuff going on inside of that particular world. Anyways, let me share this with you. Let me make sure that I do the oh, wrong one. Let me make sure that I do the right one. Our good old colleague and pal, Todd Conklin. Yes, good old Todd Conklin uh, has this going on. He has his bouncing Ford class. 
going on. You can go find out more information at safetyfm.io if you're so inclined to do so. This class that covers a little bit about everything, about how to bounce forward from this COVID thing, um, how to do some of those things as well. And he'll talk about a little things that he has seen so far going on inside of this world. If you want to find out more information, you go to safetyfm.io for some more info. That's for sure. Anyway, so it is 55 minutes past the top of the hour. If you want to come and hang out with us, I am going to go over to RadioBig.fm. I'll be hanging out over there for the next couple hours or so. If you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. You can stay locked here on SafetyFM.com, where we'll continue with our plethora of safety shows that are readily available. You can take a listen to what is going on there, and we can move forward from that particular portion. Anyways, let me give you some more info before we get you out, 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 out of here. That's for sure. So let me give you a random joke for the day if you're so inclined on wanting to use one of those things. I'm seriously contemplating remarrying my ex, but I'm afraid she'll realize that I'm just after my money. (laughs) If you need a phone starter for the day, try this one. What is the worst thing that a person can put on their dating app bio. Think about that for a second. What is the worst thing someone can put on their da- on their dating app bio? I'll tell you, I talk to a lot of interesting people all the time. I've been told that some people are now even putting that they're fully vaccinated on there. I don't know if that's the worst thing you can put, but it's definitely something to think about. If you need a conversation for the water cooler for today, try this one. Question. According to one study, this happens at about 1.30 each day in the summer. What is it? The kids become bored. That's what happens each day. Anyways, if you're kind of feeling left out because you've hung out on social media and you're taking a look around and you're seeing all the signs of people saying, hey, I'm speaking at this next safety event, blah, 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 blah. Well, (laughs) don't feel left out. You can join the crowd by posting your own sign. I am not speaking at any conference, at any safety conference or expo on September the 13th or through the 15th. If you want to make a copy of that, you're more than welcome to. Here's a QR code that's available for you can download that immediately and post that all over your social media if you want to. All you have to do is just scan the QR code. That's why it's there. If you can't do that, you can always go to the website. Go to safetyfm.com and do forward slash I am not. That is safetyfm.com forward slash I am not. And that will get you directly into the sign. So there you go. I'll leave the QR code on there just in case you want to hang out and take a download to it. I know how much they love me. Okay, so there you go. That's all I got for you for today. Hopefully you had some fun hanging out with us as we are getting the hell out of here. Like I said, you can come to radiobig.fm, come and do all that kind of fun stuff, and we'll do the things that we do there. Now, a couple things before I let you go, though. If I can leave you with a thought for today, I would love to leave you with this one. Discretion is being able to raise your eyebrow instead of raising your voice. When it comes to the whole thing of winning or losing, think about that. Learn. Take the 